Watch this, Lise. You can actually pinpoint the second when his heart rips in half. And now. Ah! like I'm wearing nothing at all. <laughs> Alright, so uh, it's been a while here. Uh, I haven't been vlogging for you guys. I've just been busy working on the car and getting stuff done. Um, had uh, some bad luck in St. Louis. We've kind of been chasing our tail, uh, getting the car prepped for Texas and making sure we had a good car going into Texas. Uh, so I got some stuff from St. Louis for you guys, some stuff from Texas for you guys. Uh, hope you enjoy it. All right, what's up everybody? Here in St. Louis, hanging out in the trailer. We got here with no problems whatsoever. Uh, and they've got a new track out there, so I'm gonna take you guys out and do a little track walk and uh, come on back. We're gonna do a little check up on the car, make sure it's all ready to go for tomorrow. And uh, yeah, that's probably it for today. And tomorrow we'll go out there and tear up that new track. So let's go take a look what that track looks like. Okay, see what the view from the grandstands looks like here. Alright, not bad. There's the track ending right there, so get a good view of them coming through, switching back, coming back this way, and exit. Not bad. That's pretty cool. Should we go up top, see what it looks like? This is going to be a cool track for spectators, man. So the judging tower is probably going to be on top of that building right here. That's what it looks like in the, uh, the track map description here. So they're going to have a pretty good view. Good bird eye, bird's eye view. They'll be able to see the outside zones very well. They won't be able to see that clip over here very well. Um, I want to say they'll probably have the live stream set up so they can judge proximity on that one but uh other than that they're gonna have a pretty good eye as to what's going on right here so uh yeah looks pretty clean i'm ready to try it out okay so status so far got a small power steering fluid leak back here not quite sure where it's coming from but i haven't bled the system yet properly so i'm gonna jack it up take off my little skid plate here and uh, crank it back and forth and see if I can see where the fluid's coming out. Uh, other than that, we're looking pretty good. Um, car ran great up in Oregon, so hoping it runs good here. I gotta properly attach this bumper at some point. Uh, and we'll see if any oil comes out of this hose back here. Let's see if we get anything leaking. There, that goes with all the tape on it. I had a little funnel tape to it, or uh, so it was directing it away because it was leaking pretty good. Let me check the oil level right about now. Let's see what we got. Let's see if I can actually use the camera to see better here. I can't see very well. I'm gonna need the flashlight. Cause the age on my way to put this bitch here to for her man Oh, 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 yeah, I did pop me a bird egg It's a hurt to help with the man, what you have like that?
Okay, little uh, pre-event maintenance going down. Gonna bleed the power steering system because I changed the rack before I uh, took off up here and it still kind of feels like it's got some air in the lines. So we're gonna bleed through that. And then uh, while that's bleeding, uh, I've been overfilling my oil because I haven't been draining the lines properly. So um, sort of figured that out uh, last time. I called my engine builder on it and stuff, but um, so it's probably gonna be overfill of oil. So I'm gonna run it and it's probably going to squirt out the catch can here. So I took the hose off the catch can, put this handy little drain pan in here and uh, hopefully that catches all the oil that wants to squirt out. We will see. Let's give her a try. getting the car down the ground but uh, got a bigger problem here I guess as I was going lock to lock this little fitting right here on my shock decided to blow out so I have a blown shock which just happened right now so after talking to uh, JRZ and a couple other people around here, I've decided the best course action is to actually not remove and fix that line because there's just no way I'm gonna get the shock rebuilt in time. Um, so I've got this stuff called Fiber Fix. I know you've seen the commercials. So we're gonna see how well that works. Um, either way, I mean, I've driven on blown shocks before, it's not the end of the world, but uh, it's going to hinder the performance of the car for sure. So let's see how that stuff works. Let's see if it'll keep the fluid from leaking and clean it up with some brake clean and go for it. And uh, we'll see if that works. Come on, Fiber Fix. Come through for me. I guess that's gonna be our fix right there. Got the zip ties just to hold, a, hold it together while it dries. And uh, hopefully that holds some pressure. Hopefully more pressure than what it was holding before. It's definitely not gonna hold all of it, but uh, it's a good start, I guess. So that's that. We clean up this shock oil and uh, get the car on the ground, take it for a little drive, see how it does. So on my test drive, I noticed that the shock was leaking heavily because I was under use and uh, the ride height actually started to drop uh, significantly. We lost about an inch of ride height on that corner. Uh, the blown shock is one thing, but losing ride height will really upset the balance of the car. So I opted to look for a spare coilover that I could borrow from someone. Good boy. It's a good boy. All right, so uh, I don't know where I left off really. I think uh, I left off with telling you guys the shock was blown and I was trying to figure it out. I ended up borrowing a field coilover from uh, Sorensen Motorsports. They were lucky enough were nice enough to lend me one so I got that on there it was a mission to get off I had to take off that back lollipop and swing the control arm way up here and disconnect the tie rod it's just it's a pain in the ass to swap coil around this car actually uh, so got that done camber is gonna be a little different than the other side um, but toe should be fine and uh, just gonna drop the car here and check the ride height so uh, Go ahead and let's drop it. See where she sits. Okay. Right height's actually not bad at all. Got two fingers on this side. We got a little over two fingers on this side, so could actually come up a little bit 
me settle the car here. Make sure we're nice and settled. So yeah, we got a two finger right there. I mean, the fenders probably aren't perfectly even, but I think I'm gonna take it up a little bit more on that side. It just looks a little low. fingers on that side just over two fingers on this side we are gonna leave it there and take the car for a quick drive and uh, yeah see how this thing actually works so when we head out for our first practice session the fans uh, didn't turn on and the car overheated got really hot, uh, took a lot of water out, so we had to re-bleed the system. Um, unfortunately, it's really hard to re-bleed with the vacuum bleeder when the car is hot because the car is making pressure and you're trying to pull pressure away with the vacuum bleeder to suck the water back in and uh, just wasn't happening in the hot pits with the car so hot. So um, we just waited out that session, got the car re-bled -re and uh, waited for the second session to start. We go out for the second session and get a few laps in, uh, maybe two good ones, and um, one of them we had a spark plug wire fail, and uh, we had to fix that in the hot pit, so that cut our practice short. We basically had to just uh, pull out that wire and uh, make a new wire, install it uh, with the car extremely hot, which is very difficult to do when you're trying to pull those wires out from between uh, headers that are, you know, 500, 600 degrees or so. So, um, got that figured out and, uh, went out for a qualifying. So during qualifying, my runs were mediocre at best, I would say. Um, you know, they were clean runs. They were just slow and I was off throttle a lot. I hit the zones and I hit my line, you know, relatively well, but, um, you know, looking at the video of the runs, it just, you know, I wasn't hammering down, you know, and I really should have. Um, but unfortunately, you know, when you're confidence is low on a new course like that and you only got a few laps under your belt um, it's difficult to hammer down and I also should have probably dropped my tire pressures at least five to ten pounds because uh, there was very little grip out there but um, I didn't want to have too much grip coming out of the uh, first hairpin because you really have to have a lot of uh, speed to make it to the, to the uh, second outer zone or third outer zone uh, at the end of the track there. So, um, fortunately, just didn't qualify well. I think our scores were in the 60s or the low 70s or something. And that was the end of our weekend. And uh, we prepared for Texas. So FD Texas, uh, we get to the track, everything was working well. Uh, we actually ran through both practice sessions without the car failing, which was a first for us in I think the last like two or three years, uh, which is pretty impressive. Um, so we were kind of confused because normally the car breaks and we're working on it and uh, we didn't really have anything to do. So um, we just uh, kept practicing, kept trying to figure out the course a little better and uh, got prepared for qualifying. So we go out for qualifying and uh, literally as I leave the line uh, for qualifying the car just started sputtering and dying and uh, losing power. Um, worked fine during practice and all of a sudden it just came on like a, out of nowhere. Um, so I barely made it through the course. We were able to complete the lap but it was like a 60 something or somewhere around that in that range. Um, so it definitely wasn't good enough to qualify. So we uh, tried to figure out what it was on the side of the track, um, figuring it was the fuel pump at that point, and uh, we got ready for our second lap. And Andy Haley and his team 
Taking a look, the crew gets the track back and set. So we go out for our second lap and we're sitting there waiting in line and uh, it turns out that uh, the lights that were supposed to show up for Pro 2 qualifying didn't show up on time so the track was just completely dark so they actually uh, called qualifying for the night and resumed qualifying the next day. So this gave us time to find a fuel pump and get it in the car uh, for qualifying so it actually worked out pretty good. So we get there the next day, we get the fuel pump in the car, and uh, we only had uh, one site lap, and then we were off to our qualifying lap. There was no practice and no prep, because uh, it wouldn't be fair to the other drivers who had to qualify the night before. So uh, we did our site lap, and the car was breaking up still um, with the new fuel pump. So we swapped uh, map sensors to see if that would cure the problem, and sure enough, it didn't. It actually got worse. Uh, as I was doing donuts, it, the car was just completely stalling out. So we called five minutes uh, right before a qualifying lap, and uh, we swapped the map sensor back to the old one, and the car worked a little bit better. Um, we went out for a qualifying lap, and uh, the car was breaking up again. As soon as I got into fourth gear and really laid on the throttle, the car started cutting out completely and the car straightened out as we were going down the straightaway and that was that that's the end of our season uh super disappointing um it's three dns and uh one top eight so uh worse than last year we were looking to do better this year but uh, unfortunately it just uh didn't work out for us so uh next year we're gonna bring a better car figure out if we're gonna swap ecus go to a different ecu possibly so we can data log stuff and figure out these problems before they happen um and uh yeah that's that see you guys next year damn